Now, what does this mean for the industry? Well, first, it can be done. I mean, if you read through the, the stereoscopic forums, everyone's complaining, oh, how are we going to get the post-processing effects and so on? Well, this is proof that it could be done. So there's a goal to aim for. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, over 50% of the GPU market or the graphics market uh, now qualifies for stereoscopic 3D. So it's a very big jump there. So nearly 100% of the hardcore gamers. There's a motivation for NVIDIA to improve their driver offering, in my opinion, rapidly, so the alternate stereoscopic 3D solutions can remain competitive. Because as I mentioned, if we looked at that, that presentation earlier, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of products on the market, and they have equal rights to get the benefits of post-processing and special effects and so on. So we're very excited to see what their, what their further driver releases are like. And uh, I think most importantly, there's now hope for games to look their best. Uh, up to now, when, when I think of stereoscopic 3D technologies, I'm thinking of trade-offs. I want to get the 3D, but I've got to give something up. Well, here's an opportunity to get the benefits of the 3D without giving something up. And this is, this is really where the industry is headed. And uh, last but not least, when you see the pictures tonight, and you see what we have to show as far as stereoscopic is concerned, I think it will be very clear that it's very easy to make a game stereoscopic 3D compatible with some minor proper programming. And uh, let's take a look, see here. And then we're on to our demonstration. So if you could just give me just a few moments, we'll set things up, and we have some exciting images for you to show, OK? Thank you so much for your patience. Oh, excuse me, uh, now would be a good time to get some 3D glasses if you don't have them already, because uh, you'll need that. OK, now what I'm showing you here is a, a video game called Star Trek Legacy, very popular game. Actually, uh, popular with me, I like Star Trek, what can I say? Um, so I'm taking credit for the popularity. Um, now, something, this is with the NVIDIA driver. Now, in my opinion, I think you'll find that the image is relatively flat. And the reason that is, is if we were to increase the depth, because of the post-processing effects, you would see uh, uh, like the glow would duplicate along with the ship. So you'd see visual anomalies. You'd get visual problems. And unfortunately, with this game, the only way to get around that is to reduce the pop-out effect to absolute minimum and just settle with depth. So you actually can see into the star field, but you don't get the pop-out effect. Now, if you could, uh, Jean-Claude, if you could press space to go to the next image. OK. This is uh, a, a game called Oblivion, very, uh, very popular video game. I, unfortunately, I, I, I have to take credit for 150 hours of gameplay out of this. It's a wonder I make a living. And um, beautiful game. I don't know. You should see it in 3D with the sword popping out. Unfortunately, the trade-off in getting the sword to pop out and getting the game to look as 3D as it, as it does, or stereoscopic 3D as it does, is you get pink water. Okay. Now I want you to burn this image in your mind. I want you to remember this image. Okay. Because now we're going to show you what the IZ3D drivers do, and uh, I think I think you'll notice a difference. So just give me a moment, please. So if you look at these images, they're much more colorful. They're popping out of the screen, okay, because we have that flexibility. You're seeing the special effects on the screen. This is, by, this is just a home PC. I don't have anything extravagant at home. Uh, in fact, I made these images on my notebook computer. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So this is, uh, this is a video game. And it, it's, it, what's exciting about this is um, these games were never designed to be displayed in stereoscopic 3D. This is Call of Duty. This is a war game. By the way, I have to warn ahead of events, there is some violence in some of these images. I hope you don't take offense to that. Um, I don't think there's any young children in the room, but, but I'm just giving you a, a warning about that, OK? But nonetheless, it looks, in my opinion, I think it looks very realistic, very exciting, and it adds a whole new excitement to the game. I'll, I'll just let this, these images speak for themselves. Now, if you look carefully, actually, if you look, if you look at the images, you'll see a blur, you'll see some fire and special effects. 
these are things you cannot, at least to date, you can't yet do with the NVIDIA drivers. So you get this realism that just wasn't there before. It's nice to have a projector. I, I wouldn't mind getting one for myself. We have the advantage of having silence, but when I play these video games, I have a surround sound system at home, so my wife isn't as appreciative of the technology. Again, if you look at the color here, you see that halo around the gun? Those, that's a post-processing effect that, at least to date, would not be possible. Also with this game, this is Fear, by the way, very popular game, you'll see a pop-out effect. Things ha seem to come out of the screen, which with the NVIDIA driver is not possible without losing what's called the heads-up display. Do you see those little details around the screen which tell you like your ammunition, your aim? Flat out, another example, we're able to get a pop-out effect without losing the interface, like the, the, the speedometer, the name, and so on. If you wanted to get these effects with the NVIDIA drivers, unfortunately it would mean losing, up, losing that heads-up display or, the, or these extra graphics. So there's always a trade, unfortunately there's a trade-off with the NVIDIA drivers and, and we're looking forward to their, their further uh, innovations. Just uh, we'll get through this game and then we'll, we'll, we'll conclude, okay? Sorry about the violence. Okay, well, I, I think you've, you get the idea. Well, we could show more images later. If you could just put the lights up, please. Now, I'd like to introduce you to someone. Just give me a moment here. Uh, it, Oleg, if you could stand up for a moment. This is uh, Oleg Teshutin. He's the chief scientist for IZ3D. He could answer any questions you have. He's actually uh, w one of the key inventors for the IZ3D monitor, and there's a lot of, lot of excitement about this. And uh, if, you, if you have any questions, by all means, feel free, and then uh, we'll quickly conclude.